Mobile games, they're not exactly the cream of the crop when it comes to the gaming industry. Most games are tiny, and basically the entire industry is dominated by Voodoo and other enormous companies. When every game is the same, it doesn't really matter who does it better. It only matters if you can get people to play your game instead of the hundreds of games that are exactly like it. In an industry as oversaturated and competitive as mobile gaming, how do you stand out from the rest? That's where mobile game ads come in. Oh wait, they're bad. So yeah, in this video I'll be talking about mobile game ads. I'm so excited for this. At this point, you're most likely thinking of a list of games that come to mind when you heard the term mobile game ad. Games like Lily's Garden, Homescapes, Hustle Castle, and more. But it actually goes back a while before that. Does anyone remember The Legend 27? For those of us that don't remember, or those who weren't there to experience it, The Legend 27 was a viral ad campaign that dates back to around mid to late 2016. It advertised the mobile game Game of War Fire Age, which had some pretty extreme advertising even outside of this specific ad. This ad was super common back in the day. You could click on basically any YouTube video or play any mobile game, and this one specific ad would be there to harass you. Just look at how many people saw it. I could talk about this one specific ad for the next two hours, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna force my friend Sam to do it. Hello everyone, Funny Farties here, and today I am going to be doing a deep depth analysis of the new advertisement that is showcasing the brand new game, League of Legends. In Deepo Forest, a bunch of Discord moderators and Reddit admins are playing League of Legends where they are suddenly be died by a man named Legend27. Kevin starts to explain how Login27 is super sus and dangerous. Just then, everyone- <coughs> Just then, everyone on their smartphones are be die by liking 27. However, Chadman disagrees that this is not serious, not because he is boomer, but because as a plot twist, Chadman is actually lesbian 27 himself. My theory as to why he is liking 27 is because he is a poopy poo fart poop head. <laughs> Wow, Sam, that was so cool. So, uh, anyways, there have been many other ad campaigns like that since, and I've noticed a lot of things that ads use to get you to get the games. I've taken some of the common tropes I've seen and put the ads into three major categories. The first section is the more honest ads. Stuff like Voodoo's ads, which normally just show gameplay with a stupid caption like, I can't reach pink color, or, if you make it this far, you're legally skilled! But my personal favorites are the mom versus dad ones. Why would your family play some random voodoo game? And more importantly, why does the dad always suck ass at the game? Speaking of sucking ass at the game, another common trope with these ads is the player's complete inability to play the game. Like the ads for Roller Splat, where they just can't seem to swipe it properly. These ads try to be annoying to get you to play the game yourself, and that must work apparently, cause these ads are still around. Another example of truthful mobile ads are the ones for Hooked. Although Hooked is an app and not a game, it still applies. Most of the ads just show the beginning of the story and entice people to get the app to see what comes next. The next category are the ads that are straight up lies. Stuff like the Hustle Castle ads that show lava puzzles are a good example of this. These types of ads tend to completely ignore the gameplay of the game, and instead choose to make fake gameplay that entices players to get the game. Ironically enough, this has led to people actually making those fake lava puzzles into real games. Which, to my knowledge, ended up being pretty successful. Homescapes is another game that does this. The playable ads tend to be more interesting than the real game, since the real game is just a clone of Candy Crush. The last category is best described as... What? These are the ads that try to make you get the game by any means, necessary or not. Which mostly leads to ads being so confusing you have to get the game. Mafia City is a great example of this. The ads show stuff like the level 1 crook versus level 100 boss. Stuff that's so strange it even became a meme. On a side note, while working on this video I saw an ad for a new game with the same setting. It also has the same types of ads as Mafia City. I'm not sure whether they were both made by the same company or not, but it's cool either way. The more modern version of this is Lily's Garden, which is more well known for its ads than the actual game. 
there's a full timeline and fanbase solely around this game's ads. Now these are already pretty weird, but the weirdest I could find are the ads for this game called Words Story. The game itself is pretty mundane. But the ads? Oh, the ads. Yeah, they're definitely a little strange to say the least. And I think the worst part of these ads is the fact that the art style, while also looking nothing like the game, is just a poorly made ripoff of Cyanide and Happiness. Of course, most of the ads take place in a prison, which makes sense because that's where the game takes place. And then there are also ads that are just straight up lies. Do you really think that this ever shows up in the game? Another good example of these ads are the ones advertising Episode, which is a visual novel game. A lot of these ads tend to center around relationships, more specifically, the act of divorcing. It seems like in the world of Episode, you could be married happily for 10 years and then all of a sudden get divorced because of a slight mistake. Eventually, people started making fake Episode ads that could genuinely pass off as legit. Even though the ads are obvious jokes, it's hard to tell since they often seem like something Episode would actually do. Even though a lot of the ads are lies, I'm still keeping Section 3 as its own category instead of bunching it in with 2. And that's mostly due to intention. Even though they both want you to get the game, 2 just straight up lies and manipulates you into getting the game yourself, only for you to delete it later. Whereas for 3, it's just fucking weird. But why would mobile game ads choose to be so odd? Well, the answer is actually pretty easy to grasp. The goal of an ad is to be memorable, and when your ad is so bad it's funny, then it's technically done its job. But what about when companies don't feel like making ads themselves? Well, they can always just pay a YouTuber to advertise them. Like Morgs advertising Coinmaster, or the thousands of creators paid to go on and on about rage. Guys, this is the quickest way to watch the rage. Oh my god, 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 oh my as for the games themselves, they're just your average mobile games. A lot of these have virtually no distinction from the rest of them. Games like Mafia City and Game of War Fire Age just take gameplay from Clash of Clans. And as I stated earlier, Homescapes and many others just use the Candy Crush formula, since it's easy to replicate. Episode is a visual novel game where anyone can make a story, and Hooked is exactly as advertised. As for companies like Voodoo, it sometimes seems they put more effort into their ad campaigns than in their actual games. Which is certainly saying something, since their ad campaigns are already pretty boring. But at the end of the day, what do I think? Mobile game ads? More like mobile game ass! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.